Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be a little bonus video of how I make my fillers for my photo card collection. Now I want to say that I'm definitely not a professional at all. I just do this for fun. I'm definitely not a crafty person. So if you're looking for a perfect tutorial, this is not the right one. <laughs> I'm sure there are tutorials on YouTube to show you how to do it perfectly. This is just going to be a tutorial of how I personally make my fillers. I should be packing to go back to grad school tomorrow, but I'm not. I'm making this video instead. So please watch if you're interested and justify my procrastination right now. I do actually have to finish up a filler project with my Cricut because my Cricut does not come with me when I go to grad school. So that is why we're doing this because it's now or never. Now first, I wanna take you through all the supplies that I use. Not all of it is required. You certainly do not have to have a Cricut. I know most people don't. I don't have a Cricut even for photo card purposes. I have a Cricut because at the same time that I started collecting photo cards when the pandemic started, I also got into binding books. So a lot of this supplies is being repurposed and it's why I have so much stuff. So you don't need to have a Cricut to make fillers, but if you do, I can show you how exactly how I do it. So it's kind of a two-parter. The first part is going to be fillers outright for people who don't have a Cricut. And then part two could be for if you're interested in seeing how the vinyl lettering works with a Cricut, if you are ever interested in getting one for your own craft purposes, I can show you how the vinyl settings work first. All of this paper comes from this brand Recollections from Michaels. It's a kind of thinner cardstock. It's actually the paper that I use to make book covers. This as well is actually book cloth. If you've ever been curious, what is my background in all my videos? It is a piece of book cloth. This is much thicker than this is. This would not recommend at all to make fillers. This is more of a traditional thicker cardstock. However, I do admit that it is on the thinner side. I think some people would think that this isn't thick enough for a filler, but I personally have never had a problem of them feeling too light in the binder or crunching or that any kind of thing that you would see with printer paper. I've never had an issue, but I will say, though I do really like this brand, it's certainly definitely repurposed from my book binding so I didn't want to buy heavier more expensive cardstock though no that is an option if you feel this paper and you're like mm, it feels too light I personally don't feel that way but I can see how some people would so all of these pads of paper come from like I said the brand recollections which you can get at Michaels now I'm going to be fully honest with you I have no idea about the availability of Michaels or this brand outside of the United States. However, I have to imagine that most countries do have cardstock colored paper options. So if recollection specifically isn't an option for you, I would recommend just going to your local craft store and finding patterns that you like because like I said, I really like this brand for its diversity of options, but it is certainly not the only option out there. They have kind of like darker wood themes which is what we're actually going to be using today, which is why I've pulled them all out, sky and sea, from also recollections. But this is where I got my, these are all my scraps, because definitely save it all. This is where I made my in the soup fillers, the love yourself her fillers, and many more. You Never Walk Alone and Butter all comes from this pad of paper, which just as an example, since we actually won't be in my photo card binder for albums today, we're going to be in my tour binder. This is just some of the stuff that I've made and they all do have fillers. I will say my last criticism of that brand is I hate the fact that they have white backs. I really wish they were the pattern on the back because in this scenario where I didn't use a pattern paper, I used actual cardstock. Obviously that's red on the back and I actually prefer it to look like that as opposed to all white on the back, but what can you do? You obviously can match up things on the back, which I have done in one case with HYYH part two, because I like having 
both of these on the thing. Sorry, there we go. So these are actually two separate pieces, but made to look like one. So obviously that is an extra step that you can do. Here's Persona. I can also talk about font, pick through. Persona font is obviously not the Persona font on the album, but it was on a shirt or something that I saw. Essentially, if you are going to use the Cricut machine and you don't pay for the Cricut subscription, which I certainly do not, but that Cricut subscription gives you access to a lot of interesting fonts. However, you can get around all that by just going to defont.com, picking out the font you want, downloading it on your computer, and then just reloading your Cricut thing. And that's how I've gotten all of these fonts. I can't always match them often because the people who do the graphic design for BTS often use what I've found is a base font that is available for free and then make their own specific modifications to it. So they're just really hard to match up completely. So you can see I've tried to match up Young Forever and I think it matches decently well, but it obviously doesn't have the italicized effect to it. So it's all up to preference, but that is how I get around a lot of the font issues. So let's look at the other supplies you will need beyond just paper. I'd say if you're not in the business of trying to use a Cricut and put vinyl lettering on, all you need is a paper cutter and a rounder. I'll link everything that I use down below. I used to make fillers, if you can believe it, with just a ruler and scissors, which is why they looked so bad. Not that mine, like I said, not that my fillers are straight and even now, they certainly are not, but they do look a lot better with just a simple paper cutter. This does not cost a lot. It, I think, cost me under 20 US dollars, so I think it's totally worth the investment. It also incredibly speeds up the process of making them because once you're in a grind, you can get through them a lot quicker. And then I also personally think a paper rounder is essential. I think it helps hide maybe not so straight lines. This one I really like. I haven't had a misfire yet. I will say just know that it is likely a rounder will ruin a card you make once in your journey of making fillers. They're not perfect because they're kind of cheap machines. And so sometimes they do misfire and completely mess up your card. And it's just a fact. Lastly, I'll get into the supplies if you do have a Cricut. So I have the Cricut Air 2 gifted to me by my lovely friend. And like I said, this is totally not a requirement. This is a big machine meant for kind of like big time crafting. Definitely would not recommend buying it if you're just gonna make photo card fillers. I think you actually have to be in a kind of craft mindset and have a lot of projects involved to actually make it make sense for you to buy such a machine. They do have smaller models, but this is just the one that I have. Okay, and as for essential Cricut supplies, you definitely need these two things. This is the kind of squeegee that flattens the vinyl to the mat. This is the thing that helps you pick out all of the vinyl, which if you do a lot of words on a piece of vinyl, you will understand why this is an essential tool. These are sold separately, of course, because you know it's all a scam to make money. And then you do need vinyl. So I have all of this vinyl because I was making book covers with it. This is how I make titles. So that's why I have so many. I usually only use gold and silver for my actual photo card fillers, but no, there is an endless amount of possibilities. The last thing you will definitely, definitely need if you aren't making photo card fillers with the Cricut is transfer tape. I will also say I realize that all of these are branded Cricut. You don't actually have to buy Cricut brand. There are cheaper vinyl options. I always go into the store saying I'm not going to buy the Cricut brand. And then it's like Michael's knows I'm coming and they're always running a Cricut promotion of buy two, get two free. So that's how I end up getting <laughs> scammed into buying Cricut over and over and over again. But do you know you don't have to buy the Cricut vinyl brand and you don't even have to buy the Cricut transfer tape brand. I just am a freaking sucker to promotional deals. Okay, with the supplies out of the way, we can get into actually making the filler. So the filler that we're gonna to make together today is going to be this one, which is 22920. Like I said, I picked out some different 
things that I thought would match well with 22920 and this Yoongi specifically. So I just kind of, I don't know, hold them up and see what I like. That one's okay. And now I'm gonna be honest with you for the sizing, I'm not going to be much help with that. I'm not going to lie. What you need to do is, this is my approach, is kind of take a piece of cardstock or whatever that you don't need to keep for any reason and just kind of trial and error cut. I What I do is I will hold it up to these lines. I'll cut, cut it on the paper cutter and then just keep making small adjustments until I find the size that I like. And then I always keep two tests. So like I said, we're not doing a nine pocket page one today, but I do have those. So we have nine pocket page test and eight pocket page test. And then this is the reference that I just use for all of my cards. I think these have been rounded with the medium size of the rounder cutter, but there is a small and large option that you can either cut or not. I find it easier to measure it with the rounding. That is something I just, I'm sorry, I can't really help you with because we all use different size things. So see how that is cut for that. So just slowly but surely make small cuts so you can get a size that you fit in there that you like and then don't use it. Use it as a test and it'll make everything moving forward so much easier. So this is my giant filler box, love to see it. I have so much in here, but unfortunately I do not have one cut that I would like to use for this. I think I'm going to do this one for this one. We are going to do three different ones for 22920. So let's get into cutting those. I'm going to use this as a test and I will probably cut some extras and I will just speed it up. So I hope you enjoy. I hope that my videos, you know, I'm definitely not known for being relaxing, but I'm doing my best effort in this video to make it more aesthetic and relaxing. So I hope that you enjoy. mine are never even and I'm personally okay with that because like I said I'm not a professional I've never cut a straight line in my life I never will so if it bothers you you can definitely get straight lines from this paper cutter but could never be me okay and we're done cutting to kind of hide the fact that there are some imperfections in my cutting I do like to use a rounder for a pocket things. I'm almost positive this is the medium size. So I guess we're going to find out. But as you can see, there are different settings and you just kind of stick it in. And like I said, there can be some misfires, but this, yes, I was right. Okay, good. Medium. There can be some misfires, but you know, it's what we're working with here, boys. <laughs> Yay, okay, and we're done. So if you do not have a Cricut and you are just here to kind of see the kind of paper and supplies that I used, this is where you would stop and you would be done. So it would go here. And so that's what it will look like without being done. But I will put two of Tay's cards in so you can see what it'll look like on a full complete page. So this would be a completed filler look for me. And you can stop there if you do not have a Cricut or if you just don't like the way the Cricut vinyl lettering works and be done with it. Okay, yay. And now that is, if you're an amateur like me, how you can make fun looking fillers. I will go into the Cricut part now if you are curious because I am going to add 22920 onto all of these. So this is how I'd use the Cricut. I'm actually not going to do second muster, I'm just going to do the zip code look. So what you need to do is you need to, this is the mats. All Cricuts, I believe, should come with mats. You can buy more. This is the light grip one that the Air 2 just comes with and it's the one that I use. It's about four squares wide, I guess. And then it goes to about two and a half. So you just have to make sure the sizing fits right on this grid. They match up. So 
I can do, since it's four blocks, yeah, I probably want it to be around three blocks size so you can actually see it, but it's not too big. So I'm going to copy that one more time. And so you have all three. You don't actually have to set up the way that it's going to be on the vinyl thing yet. You can do it once you get to make it. So I'm going to click make it. And I like to do it the long way personally. I move them over. So you just have to make sure the vinyl covers where the grid shows up and then it should be fine. And like I said, we decided to do silver. Hopefully I do not regret that decision because I definitely don't want to print it again. But all in all, I do like the silver better than the gold most of the time because I don't love the gold. A responsible person would also probably try to trim this closer. Like I said, this is not experienced craftsman work. This is amateur hour over here, folks. But if you are an amateur like me, I promise you can do it because I don't have any creativity or any kind of artistic ability, yet I can still do this and you can too. So the next step is peeling off this protective layer, which is disgusting, I know, but it needs to grip. So unfortunately, a lot of things that shouldn't be there stick to it and you run it down so it's tight on the mat. So you can see all the bumps and lumps on my mat. I should totally replace it, but you know, that's some effort and some money that I just don't want to spend when it works fine. So now we've got our pretty mat all set up and ready to go. Okay, and then you open it. Press continue once everything is where you want it to be. Then it just has to connect to the machine. So it's connected. You load the material. Now this is very important because I've done this several times. I forget to actually press the load thing. So you got to get it to load and then it locks in and then go. So we press it right over here and it will start cutting it based on what we want. <laughs> Okay, and to unload, you just press this button again. You just peel it all off, the whole thing, not the layer. And then you can put the clear coat back on this to preserve the stickiness. Let's get into this. So this is where this tool comes into place. Now I've been standing, so let me sit down for this because I'm gonna need to. But basically what you have to do is you have to peel this layer of the vinyl. So as you can see, we're peeling up this label and we need to have the actual text that we want to transfer onto the card, not lift. That is the goal. So that is why this thing comes into handy if part of something is lifting that shouldn't be. Like I said, you might not actually see that example from this because these are large, bold letters, but when you're dealing with skinnier or smaller text, it is a chronic problem. So like say this tail was lifting up, you'd push it back down with this is the best way that I've been able to do it. But luckily I showed you, I look like more of a pro because I'm not struggling with this, but normally it is a process to separate this top layer. So actually what we're gonna need to use this tool for then is just digging out the circles where they are in the nine and the zero. Okay, great, that was so easy. Just imagine doing that with letters and make E's and A's, it's horrible and very time consuming. But, okay, transfer tape is the next step. So I'm going to just measure real quick out. I should work on preserving some of this more than I do, but like I said, this is amateur hour over here. I know I'm definitely horrifying 
real craft people if you happen to be watching. Okay, here we have our work. Ooh, that actually lifted off really easy. So you separate the transfer tape, try to get it to not push up, and then you lay it over. Again, I should probably be more careful when I do that, but whatever. Okay, and then you need your little squeegee guy again. You really got it to get it to stick on there because it can cause issues when you're actually doing the transferring. And what I like to do is I like to cut them to make them a lot more manageable to use into individual things. So we'll start with Yungi's one. Now I also say sometimes tragedies happen and you don't get it lined up the way you want it to and you're just gonna have to do it again. And I'm, I'm gonna really hope that doesn't happen this time because I don't really have time to do it again, but it is just a factor of me especially not being very good at, you know, I think a normal person would probably try to line it up, but I kind of just eyeball it because <laughs> I'm me. So you slowly but surely lift. So see, Unfortunately, this is not sticking very well. So I'm going to lay it back down. I'm gonna try squeegeeing it again, but I might just have to use this tool and that's where this tool comes in handy again to keep it on the transfer tape. We're going to prevent this guy from coming along here because you want the actual vinyl to be on the tape, not the white piece of paper. And then so see when you lift that down, it'll stick there. You'll see the tail is caught, but the guy down here is not. He wants to come with the white piece of paper, but he is not allowed to come with the white piece of paper. So just slowly but surely make sure nothing gets left behind. Like I said, it's rather easy with these bigger things, but it is so difficult to get colons to stay aligned because those little pieces of vinyl love to stick on the white paper. Okay, and there we go. So I gotta roll my sleeves up for this. Here is our guy. Here is our tape. Now, I'm gonna stand up for this too. <laughs> Just lay it where you want it to go. Take the squeegee again, dig it in there. Now this is the last place where something can go wrong. I have had fillers, sometimes the paper gets ripped up. Normally I'd say the transfer tape is pretty good at not ripping up the paper, but it does sometimes happen. And there we go. There we've got a 22920. Love it. Okay, let's do the rest of them. I will speed through that. reached the end of the video. I hope this was helpful or at least mildly relaxing or entertaining. Again, like I said, I am absolutely not a professional. I'm not a creative. I'm not any of those things. I just enjoy making colorful and matching fillers. So I hope that you enjoyed. And if you are inspired to add some more color and patterns and paper into your binder, I'd love if you let me know or message me on Instagram, comment down below. I love to see it. You know, I love fillers, totally respect, 
why people do not like them or don't have the time for them or just prefer to have white fillers or no fillers at all. But this is just something that I have fun doing. And if you are inspired to kind of decorate your binder a little bit more with colored and pattern fillers, I would totally love to know. Other than that, thank you so much for watching this little bonus video. I really hope that you enjoyed. I will be back to my regularly scheduled BTS collecting content, I promise. Anyways, please like the video if you did enjoy, comment if you would like to, and subscribe if you would like to see more content from me. I hope you're having an amazing day or night whenever you're watching this video, and I will see you very soon. Goodbye. Get the hell out.